These cages in Harriet Nakabito's compound are home to her well-kept treasure. The well-constructed cages contain over 500 chameleons, which she has collected over the years. Well, you have to, you have to care for them right from the capturing of them. You have to know where to capture them from, which condition are you bringing them from. Are they from cold place or hot place? If they are from cold place, also you have to provide the facilities to keep them cold. You have to transport them well in cages, favorable cages. Despite the fact that chameleons are not regarded well in Uganda traditions, Harriet took the risk and started collecting them from the nearby bushes and currently raised close to 20 different species. Different species live together in specific cages since some species cannot be mixed due to their hostility to one another. Feeding the reptiles is a challenge to Harriet because of their feeding habits. You can give them flies, grasshoppers, uh, there are some types which eat those toads, small, small toads, they eat earthworms. So you have to see that you feed a variety of food. Not only that you feed them flies, 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 you have to change the diet. Each chameleon feeds on 60 flies a day and three locusts a day, which are all bred here. Water is another important aspect of the reptiles, which is provided in plenty to the chameleons. We, we spray the water on the leaves because in the nature, in the morning, there is dew. So that dew, the chameleons, they drink that dew, that water. And for us, we just spray natural water. But we tr ensure that we don't spray the tap water because there are chemicals. The reptiles take seven months to mature before they are exported. In the local market, it is close to impossible to find someone to purchase them. Chameleons are famed for their unique ability to change color to suit their prevailing environment, but Helen owes her transformed fortunes to this camouflaging animal. Helen also has collected close to 200 tortoises that now call this their home. Unlike the chameleons, these are easy to farm because of their feeding habits and physique. Because we feed them on cabbage, carrot, um, pineapple, watermelon. Uh, we also feed them on potato leaves. Shelters are created for them to rest when they are not feeding and are sold off to the market at a price of $60. Farmed wild animals can be used to restock the depleted populations in the wild unless they carry contagious diseases and the challenge is often meeting the demand for the market without destroying the wild stock. Now what I have here with me are two chameleons and this is the final packaging of the product. Now on the world market it actually goes for $10 per chameleon for the pet lovers. Now, whereas the whole idea of wildlife farming is new to Uganda and happens to be an expensive venture to most people, it seems like it's the only way that specific species that are rare in the world can be preserved for generations to come. Craig Kadoda, NTV, Ecotalk. <laughs>